Hi. Uh, often when discussing problems in churches today or whenever you make a critical remark uh, towards a certain practice or belief of a particular church, it's very typical for some Christians to respond by saying, well, there's no perfect church. And they might say, you know, uh, when you find such a church and you become a member there, it's not going to be uh, perfect anymore. All right. What they're doing is instead of them actually addressing the problem that you're raising and, and seeking to study and apply what the Word of God has to say about your you know, criticism, they just dismiss your concerns with the statement, there's no perfect church, as if that statement uh, alleviates them from their responsibility uh, of taking your concerns seriously. Now, first of all, what I like to do is I want to challenge this idea that there is no perfect church. Now, the question must be asked is, what do Christians mean when they say there's no perfect church? If they mean that there's no church that has perfect and sinless Christians in it, then I would agree with that statement. However, I, I think what Christians mean when they say that, that there's no perfect church, I think what they're referring to is that there's no church that is so thoroughly biblical in its structure and format and organization and its beliefs uh, so that it, it doesn't lack in any significant area. In other words, they seem to argue that all churches have at least some, they're bound to have some uh, serious problems uh, to the point that Christ would be concerned uh, with those problems. Uh, but I don't know if this is necessarily the case. For example, in the early chapters of Revelation, Christ has seven letters written uh, to seven separate churches. And what I want to point out is that in five of these churches, excuse me, in, in the letters to five of these churches, uh, Jesus makes some critical remarks um, towards them, towards the respective churches. For example, Christ has some words of rebuke towards the churches of Ephesus, Pergamos, and Thyatira, and so forth. And upon reading the words of the letters uh, to these churches, it's very, very clear uh, that Jesus does not shy away um, from giving some very uh, stern words of rebuke when the church is engaging in some kind of sinful behavior or thinking. However, there are two, ch two churches that Jesus has no words of correction for, no words of rebuke for, but only words of encouragement. That's the church of Smyrna, which is Revel mentioned in Revelation 2, uh, verses 8 through 11, and the church of Philadelphia, which is uh, mentioned in Revelation 3, uh, verses 7 through 13. Now, it could be that these two churches did have some serious problems, and Jesus simply chose not to rebuke them uh, for their problems for whatever reason. However, in light of the fact that Jesus makes a point of rebuking the other five churches when they were violating biblical principles, I think it's uh, very possible that Jesus didn't condemn the churches of Smyrna and Philadelphia because they didn't have any significant problems. That, as you could say, they were relatively perfect churches, and that they didn't lack in any significant area. They were churches that had their priorities straight. They followed the divine pattern and principles laid down by the apostles. Uh, they loved one another. They fellowshiped one another. They upheld the truth of the Word of God. They kept the Lord's Supper uh, appropriately. Uh, they had meetings where the whole body can function and use their gifts and so forth. So it's, it's a very real possibility that these two churches were relatively perfect churches. And my, my point is, is that there were relatively perfect churches then. It's very possible that we could have a relatively perfect church today. Now, please note, you know, it's not, it's not as if there are millions of instructions in the New Testament as to how church is to be done and how it's to be organized and so forth. There are many instructions, but there are a finite uh, number of instructions in the Word of God as to what church life is to be like. So it's not as if it's just impossible to have a church that's thoroughly biblical in every way. I think it is possible to have a thoroughly biblical church. And it's possible by the grace of God for an assembly of Christians to, to obey these finite number of instructions to a, to a degree so that the church is pleasing to Christ to the point that he won't have any, he doesn't have any serious concerns. And he wouldn't make any serious words of rebuke like he did to the five churches in Revelation. I say this so that you would be careful uh, before you boldly assert that there is no perfect church, neither in the past nor in the present. In light of what we've considered, that might not be entirely true. 
Let me stop here and I'll go on to part two. Thank you.